for our polling. Our question is, we're asking you to indicate the extent to which evaluation is incorporated into the culture of the organization that you fund or that you work in. Okay, let's see. We have a number of people who can see the poll, answering the poll. Okay, it's one minute. Let's check our statistics. Let's see how we did. Here's the results of our poll. So we asked the question about the extent to which evaluation is incorporated into the culture of your organization, the one you fund or the one you work in. And we see that about half of the people who responded said moderately. We do have a few people on who have said extremely and a few said a lot, but about half are moderately or less. So I'm hoping that we can sort of improve that uh, and give you some ideas on how to improve that here today. But we also are gonna give you ideas how to carry it forward. Okay, let's move on with our presentation. There are new models that a lot of us are using to think about evaluation in the work that we do. As service providers and funders, we spend a lot of time and communal resources addressing the needs and trying to make a difference in the lives of people and communities. But it's not enough to just feel good about these efforts. And in, in our work here at UJ Federation New York, we're trying to take a path of understanding that it's critical that we make sure that the investments of time, effort, and money that we are all using are sound, effective, and achieving our intended goals. In other words, how can we measure our success? Articulating goals clearly and collecting the right metrics, we believe, will help you with planning, decision-making, and telling your story. And these are the three reasons that we believe it's most important to always be able to evaluate the work that we fund. But why measure? I just explained that we have three things, or three main reasons why we measure here at UJ Federation of New York. For planning, our planners here, and people who decide how we're going to spend our grant money that we get from our donors, the planners can use evaluative information and data to make sure that what they're planning on funding and what initiatives that they're planning on giving resources to are likely to be effective and are likely to continue to help us be successful in the field. In terms of decision making, we found that it's very important for committees and for staff to have data that they can use to help them make decisions. Now, don't get me wrong, we're not saying that the data should make the decision. We use what we call a data-informed process, which means there may be other things you want to take into account other than data from evaluation, but the data should help inform the decisions. And then there's telling our story. Not all evaluation is quantitative. A lot of evaluation work is also qualitative. And when we combine the two together, we can always tell a very powerful story. We can talk about how we know that a program has worked from the data that we were able to actually show, for example, uh, that hundreds of people were impacted uh, by our funding in terms of lifting people out of poverty, but also it's important for us to be able to tell the story of how we did it and how we funded great organizations to do that work on our behalf. Other reasons to measure your funding is an investment. You should think of it that way. We would never make a financial investment without watching how our investments were doing over time. In this is, is one of the questions you will want to be asking, is this organization effective? Is it efficient? Measurement and evaluation can help you with answering those questions. You may also want to know, was my funding successful? And how successful? Another topic that really comes up a lot 
recently is what is the social return on investment? Many of you know that when you make an investment with your money in the business world, you're often told what you can expect as a rate of return, your ROI. In the world where we are investing in social programs, we should also be able to expect an SROI, a social return on investment. And while this topic is quite prevalent in the field of social impact investing, we can also look at evaluation of our grants and other programs that we fund in this way. The state of the art today is often referred to as impact measurement. But impact measurement is sort of a very fuzzy, high level term, and many people misunderstand it or really have no idea how to get to the point where they have impact measurement. So how can we get there? The first suggestion we offer to you is that you need a clear mission and goals. A mission is usually where we talk about something broad. What is the change we are seeking in a broader sense on society for the Jewish people? Or what is the change we are seeking in individuals and their Jewish identity? In the second case, we would consider that more to be a goal because it's about individual people. So very often the mission or mission statement is about a broader set of people and in many cases, a goal uh, is about an individual, or it could be about an organization or a program. But the much broader types of ways that we're looking for change are often clearly stated in mission statements. It's very important that you understand in your work and the work that you fund the difference between these two and how to use them appropriately, because that's what drives how and what you will measure. Here we have another hint for you on how you can get there. At UJ Federation of New York and in many other organizations, both in the Jewish communal sector and outside of it, logic models are often used to help build a program and evaluation framework. We're going to show you an example of one that we use and we have readily available for anyone who doesn't have one that they are already using. Within a logic model, we explain that there are three types of things that we expect to measure in relation to our work. And as a funder, I think you will find all three of these to be important. At the mission level, we measure impact. At the goals level, remember goals are more about an individual level, uh, they're more or an individual organizations. At that level, we measure outcomes. We're looking for a change in an individual, change in an organization. And then at the objectives level, we measure outputs. Here, an example might be that we would like to see that a program has 300 people that attend over a year. The objective of having 300 people attend a program, the number 300 becomes the output. Let's take a look at how this looks on a logic model. This is an example of a logic model, and it's the logic model that we hear, use here at UJA Federation New York, and that we make available through the Jewish Evaluation Network. And I'm gonna explain at the end of my talk how you can get access to these types of materials from us. We'll start with way over on the right-hand side with mission and impact. Here it says, what is the long-term effect that we expect from these activities, outputs, and outcomes? Most directly, these should most directly align with a specific aspect of your department. And in our case, it's a commission's mission, and of course, the organization's mission. These are long-term aggregate effects, which really you're talking about social or communal changes in many cases. To be perfectly honest with you, impact is the hardest of the three types of measurements that we have. It's the hardest to measure. Not all of the work that we are currently doing are we trying to measure impact. We feel it's important first to be able to understand how to measure our outputs and outcomes. 
So let's move to outcomes. Outcomes and initiative goals. For all of the programs that we fund, we ask this question, what is the expected change that will result from these activities? Specific, observable changes in behavior, attitude, perception, and knowledge within a person, institution, community, or society. Again, now we're sort of at the individual level. What is the change that you expect to see? And that change should, that you want to measure should directly result from the goals of the initiatives that you're funding or that you're operating. Now let's take a look at outputs. Outputs happens to be what most organizations have measured up till this point in time and that we have mostly been measuring in programs that we have funded over time. It probably is the easiest thing to measure because it's mostly counting things. So here for outputs, which relate to the objectives for the, for the programs, we say, how many of the target population will these activities reach? How many sessions or deliverables will be produced? And so on. Here, it's always a good idea as a funder to start to think about how many outputs, what is the objective, in other words, of this program that you're seeking with your funding. Maybe you expect 300 people to attend in one year. Maybe you expect 1,000. This is where it's a good idea to be able to talk about the objectives and the outputs. On the left-hand side, we have three columns, which really talk about the initiative that, or program that's being funded. In the logic model, you should be able to describe the target population, who is going to be served, who is going to be participating, or which organizations will be participating. You can list here the inputs, what resources are needed in order for this to be a success, and the activities, what actually is going to happen, what is going to actually be the program, what will the target population participate in, or what will be carried out with the funding. If you go from left to right across the entire logic model, what you see is a nice description and progression about what you're funding and how it should be measured. From who is participating and the resources that are needed to the activities that will be done, how many will participate, what kind of change you're expecting to happen as a result of this program, and what will the impact be on the broader society or that broader population? But don't get me wrong, not all of the pieces in this model are easy to actually carry out. And I have to say, working with many different organizations, I find that it's often a challenge to set goals that we call SMART for all of the programs and initiatives that we fund and carry out. In many organizations and in some funders, it's oftentimes that people skip this step. They will go right to deciding what to fund without actually starting out by thinking about what are the goals we're trying to achieve. And then based on that, what are the best programs and initiatives to fund to meet those goals? Goal setting is a very important activity. We do it here individually, as groups. We do it across departments. We do it in many different ways to ensure that the goals that we're setting are specific, that they're measurable, that we have agreement, they're relevant, and that they're time-based. In other words, you can accomplish them in a certain amount of time, in our case, in the time that an organization is funded. This is just one way of thinking about goal setting. There are many different ways that you can carry out a goal setting meeting, and there are many goal setting types of activities available on the internet, but we provide this as a framework for you to help you understand what does actually appropriate and good goal setting look like.
Another important aspect of moving towards impact measurement is determining how much you are willing to invest. This is a question that comes up to us regularly. Shouldn't we be spending all of our funding on programs, on implementation, on dissemination of what we know works? Shouldn't we be striving to ensure that every dollar we receive from our donors or every dollar you as a funder invest is put directly towards program work? That's a question that we face all the time. But we also know that people are concerned about whether or not the funding that we're using and the funding that people are investing actually is doing anything, that it has any effect. People want to know. How are things going? How does this program work? Things like that. If those are the questions you're interested in knowing about a program that you're funding, then you're talking about a process evaluation. Process evaluations, as a rule of thumb, often we say the first time costs more than after that for a program, and it'd probably be about 10% of a budget. For a more outcomes or output or formative evaluation, a summative evaluation, excuse me, of outputs, outcomes, and impact, we typically say you can expect to spend 10 to 20% of your budget. Now that might sound like a lot of money, but if you're investing a lot into a program or an initiative, you'll want to make sure that you're measuring success. That's what evaluation can do for you. Another thing to consider with evaluation and measurement is who does the work. In many cases, grantees can self-monitor. If you set it up right, if you use a logic model to negotiate the outputs and the outcomes and perhaps the impacts to be measured, there are grantees or organizations that you may fund that can do this work themselves. If you have confidence in that, of course, that's completely appropriate. We recommend this for small to medium and short-term types of projects and programs. When would you have to think about hiring a professional evaluator? We recommend this for more strategic, larger, and long-term projects. Here in our organization, we are setting some guidelines about when to decide that grantees should self-monitor or self-evaluate and provide us with the information from the logic model versus hiring an outside professional evaluator. As a note about hiring professional evaluators, it says here on the slide that we can show you how, and that's true. We have a series of tools that we can make available to you, and we do provide for free through the Jewish Evaluation Network to anyone or any organization interested in using them. With those tools, you'll be provided with assistance in how to write a request for proposals, how to evaluate those requests for proposals, and in general, how to think about hiring someone to work with your organization. I wanna talk a little bit about some terms that you'll be hearing as you get further into the field of evaluation and impact. The first one is social impact. Social impact is part of a field of social impact investing that many of you have probably been exposed to. There are many different types of social impact investing. For example, there's one uh, which is frequently used uh, and commonly used right now actually uh, in Israel and other places where businesses are used in a different way than they used to. So for example, you may have an ice cream shop where the employees are actually people who previously would have been difficult to employ. Perhaps they have a developmental disability. Perhaps they have a mental health problem. 
or perhaps they have some types of physical disabilities that have prevented them from working in the past. But with supports in place in the business, the intention is that they can work, earn income, and contribute to society. Investors in these types of businesses, or social impact investors, are expecting to see that the business can actually provide a financial rate of return on the investment, but also a social return on the investment. The social return on the investment is more complicated and challenging to measure, but could be measured in things like the extent to which the individuals who work in the ice cream shop are no longer relying on disability payments or the extent to which they believe that their lives have improved. These are the types of social return on investment measures that may be used. Another place you'll hear about measurement and the word impact is in strategies for building initiatives across organizations that are concentrating on impacting the same issue or problem. And this is commonly called a collective impact project. A collective impact projects are currently being used in many different sectors. In Israel, there's a collective impact project that's focusing on trying to help large businesses find ways to employ and better employ the Arab community. That's a collective impact project. I spoke before about what social return on investment is. You may also hear the term KPI. What is a KPI or key performance indicator? Interestingly about KPIs, as they're often referred to, some people describe KPIs as what we would call outputs. How many of something occurs with funding? Others? might decide that there's a key performance indicator that's in what we would call an outcome indicator, how something has changed or how much it has changed. But if you hear the term KPI, it's really another term for what's being measured. In general, there are two types of evaluation that people talk about in the field. The first is formative and the second summative. As we explained before with process evaluations, those are often also called formative evaluations or a fidelity analysis. This is where you're looking at the actual program or project itself and the extent to, way, to which it works the way it's supposed to work. Are the types of people hired the right types of people? Are the processes being put in place, the processes you expected to be put in place? If the program states that it's using an evidence-based practice that's based on something that has a manual and has research behind it, you may want to do a fidelity analysis. Fidelity analysis will tell you whether or not the program that's being implemented is in fact the same as the one that's called an evidence-based practice. It allows you to see the extent to which it's being carried out in a way that matches what was studied under research, so you can ensure that you will get the same types of outcomes. The last bullet we have here says summative evaluation, and a summative evaluation is usually one that involves collecting data, and this is where you will see the evaluations that include outputs, outcomes, and impacts. What are some frequently asked questions? Often we are asked, what are the differences between research and evaluation? This is a very interesting question because we know that many people understand that when we fund a program or a project, we're not actually going to do a large-scale study. We're not going to do research to find out whether or not it works. We want to know on a more simple basis whether or not 
we're seeing any change and we get the outputs that we're looking for. Evaluation does not test a theory. Research does. In evaluation, we, we, we are assuming that the theory has already been tested. In evaluation, we're not measuring against a counterfactual. I know that's a big word. What that means is we're not measuring against what would have happened if we had not done this program. We assume there's evidence of effectiveness already for what we're about to implement or fund. In evaluation, we're not describing how a program should work. We're describing how the program is working. I hope that's clear. I want to stop here and talk a little bit about how you can learn more about evaluation, how you can get involved with the work that we're doing, and where you might be able to find others that are thinking about this. About a year and a half ago, UJ Federation New York was beginning to understand that our field had a lot of people thinking about this topic and asking the same questions about this topic. So we formed what is currently called the Jewish Evaluation Network. When we started it, it had about 20 members. And today, the Jewish Evaluation Network has 227 members. You will find members of the network in cities and places around the world. I want to tell you a little bit about how you can get involved and become a member. Becoming a member of the Jewish Evaluation Network is really very simple. I'm going to put up an email address that you can write to to become a member. It's actually on the bottom of this slide. It doesn't cost anything to join. And as soon as you join, you will be able to get information through our monthly newsletters and you will be sent information about how to join our online sharing platform. We're currently using space on Fed Central, courtesy of JFNA, to host all of the information that we have for the Jewish Evaluation Network. And you will be given access to Fed Central and to the space on Fed Central where all of this information is sitting. The Jewish Evaluation Network is not, is not performing evaluations for other organizations. We are, however, trying to be a creator and your resource curator for the field. We connect people to each other who have specific questions about evaluation. We're trying to get conversations going around thorny issues related to evaluation in the field. And we hope that people across the Jewish communal sector will take advantage of this. The power of a network is not in how strong any one node is but in how strong and powerful the connections are between the people in the network. We've had quite a few meetups and other events over the last year and a half that people have participated in. We're anticipating in 2017 to have a number of other types of events where members of the network can get together and share and work out some of the, as I said before, some of the thorny issues. Let me give you an example. Right now, there is a subgroup, or what we call an emerging node in the network, that's been talking about serious efforts and engaging serious researchers into the question of how do we measure things that are difficult to measure? How do we measure Jewish identity? What instruments can we develop to do that? Can we, as a sector, come up with instruments and measurements that we would all use, or most of us use? Maybe there's a menu of measures that we could all draw from. How could we put that work together? How could we disseminate it? These are all very important issues because as you know, many of the things that we fund are very difficult and complex to measure. And we'd like to go beyond understanding the outputs or how many people attend programs or come to events or participate and move much more towards outcomes which means being able to measure the change.
If you'd like to get involved or learn more or sign up for the Jewish Evaluation Network, all you have to do is send an email to this email address. And our network architect, Sarah, will get back to you. We hope you'll take advantage of this opportunity. We also are interested in talking to people about how to help us build the resources of the architect base here in New York for the network. As you can imagine, trying to ensure that the links between people and that the network is strong and to ensure that we have adequate information flowing and events and trainings and other information available in order to ensure all of that, resources are required. And if you're interested in helping us, we'd love to have you aboard. We'd love to have more people be members of the network, but also supporters as well. So please reach out to us through this email address. Now we have another poll we'd like you to participate in. Just hang on one second and you'll see it on your screen. Our second poll has two questions. The first question we'd like you to answer is, did this seminar present you with new ideas that you can apply immediately to your work? The second question, are you interested in learning more about this topic? Let's wait one minute and see how we do with our poll. Is everybody participating? I hope so. Okay, one minute. So 40% of the people who participated in the poll found that some new ideas from the seminar. So we're glad that that's the case. Another 27% or about a quarter of the people aren't sure yet. Well, I hope you can learn more and find ways to use what we presented today. Our second question was, are you interested in learning more about this topic? And it's an overwhelming, resounding yes. So for those of you who would like to learn more about the topic, if you're not members of the Jewish Evaluation Network, you really should sign up. It's free and easy to do. And once you sign up and then you get uh, yourself established as a member of our sharing platform, you'll see there's a lot of information on it for you to use. We're going to close the poll. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the resources that are available on our sharing platform. So on the sharing platform for the Jewish Evaluation Network, you're going to find lots of interesting and useful tools. You'll find the logic model that I described before and a set of instructions that accompany it. You will find the information that I explained before about how to hire and evaluate a professional evaluator if that's what you need to do, the request for a proposal template, and some other information that will help you through that process. And there are a number of other really interesting tools and pieces of information that others have posted as well. If you go to that sharing platform, you will be able to post information, download information. We have also posted a short series of videos about evaluation. These are brief videos that are really just there to provide people with an introduction to the field of evaluation and to the topics that we discussed today. So if you have colleagues that you'd like to share with, that might be a good place to go. There's also space on the sharing platform for people to ask questions 
of others in the network to connect and to find people that can help you answer your questions. And perhaps you may find ways to work together. It's a great opportunity for us to build our network, to find ways to work together and to strengthen our fields. Now we're gonna open up the mic and we're gonna see if anyone has any questions. Okay. We're looking at questions that have come in. Have we unmuted everyone? Okay, everyone is unmuted right now. So if you have a question, please feel free to ask. Someone did send us a question asking whether we would provide the slide deck. If you send an email to this address, jen at ujfednewyork.org, and you ask for it, we will send you the slide deck. Any other questions? If you're not going to ask a question, you might want to mute your mic so other people can be heard. Anyone? Okay, let's check the chat and see if any questions have come in. Nope. No more questions. Oh, I hear someone typing. Okay, while people are thinking about questions, we're going to ask Mirav Fine from the Jewish Funders Network to give us a little information. Mirav, are you on? I am, can you all hear me? Everyone can hear you fine. Terrific, thank you so much for uh, Judy for this really thoughtful presentation. I hope that um, all the folks on here learned a lot about how we can be better about evaluating programs and understanding what evaluation even means and how to do it better. Um, I was not able to hop on at the beginning of this call. Uh, a, a different webinar ran over talking about a completely different topic, the refugee crisis, but here we are. Um, and I just want to give a bit of framing to what JFN does and why we create these webinars um, and programming throughout the year. Um, our mission is to bring funders together so that they can connect with each other on areas of interest and um, fund areas of interest together. We believe in the power of networks and we know that evaluation is critical to doing that work. Um, this is, all of our programs are connected to our values as well. Um, this particular program I think falls under partnership, Arivu, doing things together, understanding how we can work together to understand evaluation and to improve our grantees' work. Um, and finally, just a word about our conference coming up in March. Um, if you'd like to learn more about evaluation, if you'd like to connect to other funders who are doing this kind of work or to learn more about what's out there, you should definitely join us at our conference this March in Atlanta. It's from the 19th to the 21st. The early bird deadline is in, uh, I think, a week, week or two. So you can still get in um, under the gun. We've got lots of stuff going on there um, on this and many, many other topics. To learn more about that, you can go to our website, jfunders.org slash conference and see our agenda, uh, programming items. And you can always uh, contact me, Marav, at jfunders.org. Um, and I'm happy to tell you all the things that we're doing and why JFN can uh, help you do better funding. So thanks again, and thank you to the folks at UJ Federation for all your hard work in putting this together. It's such a beautiful presentation. I love watching a Prezi, so thank you. You're welcome, Marav. Thank you for being on with us. Are there any other questions before we sign off? Okay, well, I want to thank you all for participating today. Encourage you again to uh, join us um, at the Jewish Evaluation Network. If you have any interests, um, we take all, you know, anyone who wants to can join us. And um, we will be uh, talking throughout the year about a number of different topics and events. Uh, right now, just to give you sort of a heads up, 
Um, we have a number of things that are in the planning stage and we'd love to have people help us with even planning them. Uh, the first is that we are um, going to be having a panel discussion uh, about evaluation and things that are hard to measure um, in the Jewish communal sector at New York University at the Wagner Graduate School um, in late April and everyone in the network will be getting notice about that. We're going to put, be putting together a really fantastic panel. It will be late in the day, so people who live near here can come or work near New York uh, can come after work or later in their day. Um, and we will definitely make it available on Zoom for other people to be able to watch and, and listen in to that panel. We are planning, um, again, to have some type of gathering uh, around the GA, um, which will come up again next fall. Uh, we are uh, working with a couple of our members on some likely submissions to the American Evaluation Association Conference in October um, as well, uh, where we hope to have another meetup uh, of the network. And we're looking for more ideas and more people to try to help us uh, put together different types of gatherings, either virtual or in person or in different places around the world. And we look forward to meeting all of you and hearing from you soon. Thank you all for participating. Thank you.